This episode is sponsored by Surfshark VPN. SpaceX Starship Update Serial Number 3 Cryogenic Failure Explained and Expectations for Serial Number 4. My name is Felix and I am your host for today's episode of What About It? And as always, there has been a lot going on in the space industry lately, so let's dive right in. Starship Updates What a week! SpaceX has not taken a breath working tirelessly on the one thing that keeps the space community busy right now. Starship development definitely has its ups and its downs. As you know from my last episode, SpaceX has recently been very busy preparing Starship Serial Number 3 for some test runs prior to a planned static fire and a 150 meter hop. Everything was prepared. FAA clearance, FCC permit, a NOTAM for the local airspace. Same as back in 2019 when we saw Starhopper fly. There were lots of improvements on Serial Number 3 as well. The build quality made a huge step forward again with more and more buildings at the construction site making it easier and easier for SpaceX to keep up and improve build quality. So with good feelings and high hopes, SpaceX put the serial number 3 tank stack on the test stand and hooked it up to the connectors. First came a room temperature pressure test. SpaceX does this initial test to get a feel for everything and to gain confidence. Test valves and connections at lower pressure levels and make sure everything is set up for the real deal. The test with cryogenic nitrogen. The test came and the test passed without major difficulties. Then the tanks were vented and the tank stack was emptied. After the test had finished, SpaceX prepared for the second step. The dreaded cryogenic test that already cost two Starship tank stacks so far. Though everything went fine and excitement went up. When the typical silver lining appeared on the outside of the stack's lower oxygen tank, it was the first indicator of an ongoing cryogenic test phase. Shortly after the test had begun, SpaceX stopped it though. Musk tweeted that some of the valves leaked at cryogenic temperatures. Apparently it was a small problem though and SpaceX continued their testing after applying the proper fixes. Again, they filled up the lower tank and as you can see here with frost building up on the lower part of the tank section but also condensate that stretched all the way to the common bulkhead between lower and upper tank. It's pretty safe to say though that SpaceX did not fill the tank up all the way. Why they did that is unknown. Shortly after they emptied the lower tank again, they then started testing the upper tank and this time they filled it up completely. The ice on the outside built up all the way to where the upper bulkhead attaches to the inside of the hull. Why they did not fill the lower tank all the way but did it with the upper tank is unknown. What it caused though was pretty spectacular. The tank section collapsed, broke in half and fell off the test stand to the ground. Let's look at this again and find out why exactly it happened the way it did. The first signs of something being seriously wrong can be seen quite a bit before the collapse. Do you see this? It's the entire oxygen tank losing structural integrity. Playing it again it kind of looks like a coke can that's being crushed. But what caused it? Where did the force needed come from? Obviously this time it's something very different than what we saw on the serial number 1 or mark 1 destruction. There's no explosion or implosion. It's not caused by a weld failure this time. It's something really heavy pressing down on it. Remember how the methane tank on top is still filled? That's around 400 to 500 tons of liquid nitrogen there. You see, when such a hull is pressurized, its structural integrity is much higher. Imagine the coke can again. If you put it upright on the ground, it's really easy to crush it with your foot when it's empty. Try it though when it's not. The pressure inside will keep the walls of the can straight, which makes it withstand much more force. Now, since the oxygen tank on the bottom was empty though and the upper tank was full, it pushed down so hard that the lower part of the hull lost integrity and from there on, it was just a matter of time until the upper tank with all its weight would fall over and break the whole tank section apart. And that's what happened. I synced the audio here for better experience. That's it for serial number 3. There was a small fire next to the test stand after the mishap which was likely caused by one of the Tesla batteries that were already installed on top of the tank section. To my knowledge it did not cause any damage though. 
Musk tweeted shortly after that it may just have been a configuration mistake, which leads me to the conclusion that the lower tank should maybe just not have been empty. Either confused by the holdup mid-test due to some valves not working properly or a very strange test plan right from the beginning, the test went wrong. If the lower tank had been filled up all the way and then the upper one, and if they then would have emptied the upper one first, nothing would have probably happened. The tank section most likely is ready for a flight, it's just not there anymore. So there is nothing to do the test flight with. Nonetheless, this gets the question up if SpaceX should rethink the hull structure. Similar things have happened in the past. Here for example, you can see an Atlas Agena rocket on the pad, meeting a very similar fate caused by exactly the same phenomenon. Empty tanks don't offer a strong structural support if they are not otherwise reinforced. Should SpaceX rethink the construction? Especially an empty Starship coming back from orbit should have trouble with its structural integrity as it is now. We cannot forget though that we see early prototype work here. There is no reason to believe that SpaceX is perfectly aware of the current structure and its flaws. Maybe this is just the stage SpaceX is at and later versions will have more structural support. What's safe to say though is that SpaceX most likely learned a lot from this test and got tons of data again. It's a pity though, but if this is really due to a human error, it still at least means that SpaceX is on the right track. Keep in mind that building these Starship prototypes is really inexpensive and build times are really fast by now. It won't take SpaceX long to get another serial number 3-2 on the test stands, maybe even with some slight improvements to call it serial number 4. In the end though, just another tank section to get proof of concept. Expectations for Starship serial number 4 I'll be honest with you, I had something completely different planned for today's episode. We were all looking forward to a static fire and a 150 meter hop, which now will all most likely have to wait at least another two weeks. Nonetheless, I still want to keep you informed as best as possible, so here's what we can expect from here on and with serial number 4. Build time unknown, but likely very quick. SpaceX by now seems to know exactly what they're doing when it comes to assembling these tank sections. They've had some practice and it seems like they'll have to keep them coming for now. So with no surprise, SpaceX is already on it as you watch this episode. First parts for serial number 4 are already done and first stackings should begin rather soon. We'll most likely see the usual. Tanks welded and stacked. The upper part of the methane tank is already done. Add an oxygen tank and the thrust section and the only thing missing is some plumbings and the new legs. Big thanks go to Nick from the What About It community for this absolutely accurate animation of the leg deployment on the latest SpaceX Starship prototype design. Here you can see what's currently hidden from view tucked inside the thrust section's skirt. The legs shrunk down drastically from the different design iterations SpaceX went through over the years unfold from inside the thrust section and lock into place under the hull. SpaceX obviously is still looking for ways to reduce weight and improve aerodynamics. In this comparison, rendered by Kimi Talviti and illustrated by HumanMars.net, you can see all the different variants. And if you pay close attention, you will see that this latest design isn't new at all. BFR in 2017 had a very similar design approach with very small legs deploying from the thrust section. With the only difference that SpaceX this time even positioned the retractable legs inside the hull's diameter. After everything is assembled and that dreaded cryogenic test is finally passed comes the day we should actually have had this week or maybe next. Since Starship serial number 3 was not the one to take flight though, let's assume serial number 4 will finally do the trick. This is what it should look like. It's not absolutely clear yet if SpaceX will use 3 Raptor engines, but the thrust puck configuration points to a full set of 3 engines propelling the Starship prototype into the Boca Chica sky. Stanley Creative left the nose cone out on my request for now. As there's no sign pointing to SpaceX actually wanting to do that first hop with a nose cone and aerodynamic covers would certainly not be needed for a 150 meter hop. So this is it and this is what we would have seen this week and that we'll have to wait for just a bit longer. Thank you very much Stanley Creative. 
Always remember that this is a prototype phase and it's not about hope, fear or luck. It's about testing, failing, improving and testing again. And that's exactly what SpaceX is doing right now over and over again. We'll just have to be a little bit more patient. Trial and error are sometimes the only way to go. That certainly is true when it comes to rocket development, but it's not always the best way to go. And it definitely isn't when it comes to online security. And if you want to add another valuable break to your security wall, today's sponsor definitely is a good choice. Data and identity theft, traceability, intrusive advertising and geoblocking. Those are realities almost everyone has been confronted with when moving about in the digital world. And those who want to destroy our fun are all in their home office right now. Convenient, right? Surfshark VPN makes it just a little bit harder for them to get you. And if you're a hard target, they'll go somewhere else. Or is it that you just don't know what to do in lockdown and you've watched all your favorite shows on Netflix or Disney? Surfshark can help there too by removing the so-called geoblock from your account. All streaming services have different catalogs in different countries. What if you could watch them all? Just activate your VPN, refresh the page and you're safe for at least another 6 months of being locked in. I use Surfshark every day. It automatically starts up when I start up my PC and when I need it I just activate it with one click. Use my code to get 83% off plus one extra month for free and at the same time support what about it. Surfshark offers a 30 day money back guarantee so there is no risk. Surf with your own rules. Links in the description. So this wraps up today's episode of What About It. Will we see a starship fly before Christmas? And what's your favorite part about cryo testing? As always, tell me in the comments. And welcome to the Patreon and YouTube member shoutout. And if you don't know who these people are, look at this list. That's all their names. And that's the most vital way of support that I have. They support me with funding, ideas and research and they are the foundation of everything I do. Without them, what about it wouldn't be the same. So show your love for them in the comments and maybe even consider becoming one yourself. And as on every single episode, there are more members to the Y Army. Everyone, please give a warm welcome to Johann Sperling, Radomir Basta, Paul F. Jones, ECE, Noah Mehl, David McKay, Daniel Witte, Johnny Thomson, Joe Walter and many others. You rock! Thank you for watching this episode of What About It? And now would be the appropriate time to hit the like button, subscribe and don't forget to hit the bell button to actually receive a notification when I do my uploads. It's a version of support that doesn't cost a penny and it does help me to produce more and better content. And if you do want to spend your money, consider becoming a patron and get insights into the production of What About It and chat with me on the Discord. Or you could buy yourself a new shirt on our merchandise store and look like me. There are plenty original designs available in good quality for a low price made by a space nerd for other space nerds. It all helps me to give you the latest and greatest about space and science. I hope to see you on the next episode. Until then, have a great time. Valuable <laughs> Look at this list. No, this list. <laughs> Appeared on the outside of the... <laughs> there was a small fire. There was a small fire. There was a small fire. Also pretty cool. Foundation of everything I see. I do.